Alrighty, hey guys, I am here for a dunking tutorial video. So here you see how my bag is set up. And I am going to go over here and grab my buddy and we are going to just go through some dunking shots. Let's see where we are. Looks like we have a good stream video. Hey guys. Looks like he's there. Hey, what's up? Glad to see a few guys in here already. We're going to do some dunking shots here. And uh, for the most part, I'm going to basically just put it in some uh, ranges where we can just talk a little bit about dunking and kind of strategy and come up with uh, those kinds of shots for uh, just as an alternative way to uh, think about something in case you ever get in tight lies or something where you really need to make a shot. Hey guys, nice to see you guys here. What I like to do on this hole is I like to uh, you know, bend it around the corner here, for sure. Um, a little bit of distance helps you on this one. Um, but as you can see, you know, we're on the short tees here. So, Marlin ball, let's just stay with that. I'm going to do this with a hook, as opposed to uh, what I would normally do, which I might just go to landscape mode. But uh, let's see if I can't get this with a hook here. Just get it around the corner. Make sure that you don't hit that rough over there that I'm just skipping by right there. Hey, Bobby, how's it going? I'm in Maryland. So it sounds like you're not too far. can't move that up a little bit. Still getting used to this live uh, stream feed. It's a little unusual for me. Especially see the comments there. I do know how to turn the comments off. Um, I think it allows you guys to keep keep commenting but uh, they won't pop up on my screen. How many rings slice? I usually go uh, it's 20 rings or the way that I do it it's uh, 2.5 bullseyes. So what I do here for when I'm lining up a dunk is I try to figure out am I mid club in between and it looks like I'm a little towards max but in the middle and min usually plays around 2.6 pretty close maybe 2.5 um, you see I'm closer than that so which means I'm gonna need to go more ranks but you're gonna see me go maybe kind of right in here a little bit over a ring and of course the most important thing is that you try to get as centered as possible here up oh, looks like I got the glitch where it goes out of bounds so I think that happens when you land near the edge of the cup but uh, I've never been able to uh, confirm that because there you just see it go OB <laughs> But so that's kind of my strategy that I'll go about when I'm doing these is uh, just try to line it up and, um, you know, keep it as centered as possible. Yeah, no problem. Thanks uh, for checking out some of those Tour 9s. I'm going to keep posting them. I'm going to try to get through as many shootouts as possible, but I'm a little burnt out on 9 right now. Just been playing it for quite a bit. I'm getting bored of it so I'm just taking a little break just a little short there one of the best tips that I can give you is just make sure when you're pulling back that you're centered in the uh, in that little golf window that they give you make sure that it's dead center or if anything that you're a little right or a little left 
Again, it should be a very similar lineup here. Um, I played that last one about 2.5 per ring. So now that I know that uh, you know I'm half half the wind and the aim was pretty good, you're going to see me play about half a ring. So this is what I try to visually do to see that it's about half a ring. Come in just a little bit on that. And then again, just make sure that you're centered. You see I have plenty of time here, so I'm just going to make sure that uh, foremost that I get that right in the center there. And there you're seeing it, kind of an awkward, uh, awkward camera angle, but it went in. Not too bad. And what's nice about when you have Saturn on your bag, even if I miss, well, if I miss and it doesn't go OB like that on that glitch that you just saw there, then it'll still be on the green for the putt. So you don't have to make the shot to kind of salvage what you're doing here. I'm going to see if I can jump on this on my tablet here. See if I can't find this conversation. See what the feed looks like. See if I can see your guys' comments on there. Now what I like to do here is maybe around five, six top spin. You can see I got a lot of ball trail on this club, so I can kind of see what's already kind of happening. Play about a ring for that wind, and then no real power or anything. Just kind of let it roll out. See, I did not hit perfect ball. It ended up costing me, but I got the fairway. So getting the fairway, I'll be able to still go for the dunk. I mean, I could go for the dunk with the rough, but uh, I might send it off the cliff. I'm pretty sure with my claw. So I have claw on right now, which I think even if I miss the dunk, I might be able to keep it from going over the cliff, possibly. Dunking is tough. Yep. Uh, so lots of practice with the dunking. Um, I'm, that's up, 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 up. <laughs> oh, jeez. <sighs> so when you roll on the green, there you're screwed. You basically guarantee yourself a par when you do that. So let's see here. I'm trying to size up, and you see I'm right at max club. I got it just in here tight enough, and right at max club, I'm at about 1.5 per ring on claw, So, which means I'm going to have to go outside of a ring here. So you're going to see me set up. Yeah, that, that drive is crap. they they got to figure something out about that, because that's a tough one to swallow. You see, I'm going to play just a little bit over a ring here. And again, the, the biggest secret is making sure that you're centered with the ball here. Uh, take a little bit of extra time if you need it. I try to give myself the extra time. And there you're seeing it was right on the front edge, didn't quite get there. So it looked like a little bit of a overplay on the wind, and that had to do with it being uphill. So that's another thing that you guys got to factor in when you're doing these, because that should have never been more than you know one ring, but you saw me going more than one ring. Um, but it looked like one ring was about perfect. It was because it was so uphill. So that's the reason that you're seeing that. And as you see, my, my partner here, he's a little uh, screwed because he's on the green. So one of the things that I want to mention here is you can see how small the bullseye is, right? So look at the relationship to the hole. It gives you a lot of room for error on these dunks. So I just want to kind of show you this. I'm lining up to the side of the hole here. Um, of course, you know, shanking out up. Not quite. I, I went like two, like around two bullseyes there just to kind of try to split the distance there and missed it. But uh you see how small that bullseye gets. It's smaller than the hole. It means if I line that up on the hole, all I have to do is put it somewhere in the hole and we're good there. 
Uh, the glitch that I mentioned about, uh, I'm assuming you're referring to the, um, the out of bounds glitch. Uh, ah, that's only like the third time it's happened to me personally, but I've been playing with guys that it's happened probably at least three times as well. So, so I've seen it at least, at least half a dozen times, probably closer to a dozen. Uh, so it is very rare. I do believe that it only happens once you get out to the edge of the cup. So if you can if you can hit it more centered, I think for the most part you're good to go. Yeah, if you're that close, no matter what, dunk it. But just be very careful with with the way that you're pulling back. And we're going to go for the dunk here. I have a lot of trouble dunking this one. This is a very tar tough shot because it's on like a side hill. It makes finding the hole that much tougher. Um, I'm not going to use the backspin or anything because I, I'm not really going for close. I'm just going for this dunk here. Um, I'm not sure what I usually play here, but notice I'm about mid-club, which will probably play about 1.1 per. But then notice also it seems to kind of dip down. The hole kind of dips down. So maybe, you know, right around a ring somewhere. It's kind of close to where you need it. And that just kind of mentions what I was just speaking about. It looked like I was all over the hole there, but still couldn't hit the, uh, this, this is a very, very tricky hole to hit, like actually hit the cup because of the way that it's on a hill. I've had a lot of trouble dunking this. Now, I don't usually go for the dunk here, but as you can see, it's somewhere, it looks like it's, you know, it looked like I was close there. It might be like 1.0 per ring or something close to that. Because it looked like I missed a little short. It looked like I was right on line. I played at one ring. So for this one, I think he should just stay a little bit inside. But I, since I was short, you know, you just got to be very precise with the way that you uh, release when you're using your uh, bullseye here. So w what I just saw is his was, uh, he, he released more towards the top. And so he came up short. Like that, that couldn't have got to the hole because his release was too high in that little center circle there. So it had no chance to uh, make it to the hole there. So you got to be very careful when you're setting up these dunks, especially, uh, you know, the farther away you are. If you do that with a wedge, you can get away with it. If you do it with a three, with a wood or an iron, usually you're, there's no way it's getting to the hole. It comes up short. So you got to be very careful with uh, what you're doing with the positioning. Um, not so much right and left, like you can put a little bit of curl on it as long as you're still centered in the middle. But distance wise, you gotta make sure it's right in that center. So you see this one's much better. Um, I do notice that, uh, you know, putting it towards the back just ever so slightly, and you saw that one was really close. This just goes to show, like, how hard this hole is to hit on this. Uh, it's, like, right on the edge of the cliff here with, with how it's on, like, a side hill, and it just makes actually hitting the hole that much harder. So let's see if I can't try this again. I'm at about a ring and a half. A little bit more. Last try at this one. It looks like, you know, I missed it ever so slightly right. It's just a little bit too much of a correction, even at a ring and a half. So that should just help you try to size up, you know, how many yards per ring you have to play. If I just went a ring and a half on a 1.7, then it's probably one point, uh, maybe a little bit more than one point. 
maybe like 1.1, 1.2, somewhere in there. So let's just go for another shot now. I'm tired of missing this one because it's a real hard target to hit. So we're just going to give up on that. Um, I usually play this Saturn. The accuracy isn't the best, so I play it maybe two, maybe over here somewhere. And I'll just do a hook shot. Let's see if I can't get this going at the hole a little. Should have curled it. Needed some right curl there. <laughs> and you you notice just the slope of the severity of the slope makes it seems to like change the target for this one. It makes it makes targeting in on that hole so much more challenging because the hole's like crooked. It's not straight. There you <laughs> uh, So just something kind of foolish, just messing around. So funny to see that go in. <laughs> How many people we got in here? 23 right now. <laughs> Not too bad. So in this hole, kind of the same thing. There's so much slope around the hole that going for the dunk here is kind of tricky. Now, I do do it when I get up there by the green. So instead of going for the hole here, I'm just going to kind of lay up back into the fairway on the front of the green here. Yep, yeah, that shot was uh, very nicely done for sure. So when you get it to there, that makes dunking really easy. Where it gets a little challenging is where you leave it up on the hill. And it's kind of the same type of reasoning as to what I said about that last par 3 there. Is it just kind of closes off the angle of the hole. And it makes it a lot harder to, uh, to actually hit the hole. So here I'm going to go at this with not enough spin to make it to the green. So it'll come up short, and I'll try to go for a crazy dunk here off the front. It's very, very challenging on this front. Um, where Rob just put it, it's not too bad there. Because you can see how the hole's more open, receptive for the dunk here. Like you can see a large portion of the hole since you're below since you're kind of like below the hole shooting to an upward target what's the exact opposite for me the hole closes off when I go for the dunk up on top of the hill up there so it makes dunking very challenging I never go for the uh, dunk when I'm just uh, playing this one normally unless I'm right here and uh, one thing to note uh, when you're in here super tight especially on you know small winds you're not even gonna need to really move it from the pin don't 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 ever leave it off the pin. And there he he must almost a short hit that one again because that just crept in on the front edge there. But uh, you just want to be real careful with how much wind that you actually play. So let me show you this. Um, let me show you where Max Club is for me. So actually, wow, I didn't even get it. I didn't even get it into uh, 
end bringer. I've never done this with claw before. So at min claw here, this is like 3.0 per ring, but I am shooting to a downhill target. So that's something to keep in mind a little bit. The wind might play just a little bit more than it usually might. So I'm, but notice how much room for error, like the cup is almost half a bullseye there. Like I have a lot of room for error here, which is a nice. And there you have it. Just kind of shoot it right in the hole there. Like I mentioned, when I rotated that screen, you could see almost half the uh, half the bullseye there was encompassed by the hole. So what you like, what I like to do is just kind of line it up that way to, um, you know, create all that margin of error and just kind of put it in where the aim is. Like I was telling you, it's you know about 3.0 is the normal normal aim for min club there so if I put you know if a ring is 3.0 and if I just put you know one ring to half a ring in the center of the hole there you know that's enough tolerance no matter what that it's gonna grab the hole the only thing you have to focus on is making sure that you're in the exact center of the bullseye <clears throat> Just to kind of speed things up here a little bit, I'm going to just throw a little bit of backspin on this so we don't have to keep trying to dunk this over and over again. So I forget what I play here. I usually have to resize it up. There's min club, so I'm towards min. Um, I, for this one always plays a little bit downhill. So maybe one point. You know, I'll play it at a little bit less than min. 1 point. That should be pretty good. Let's try that. Might be a little underplay. Yep, great ball anyway, so it's not going to matter. But the distance looked pretty good. And here you'll see I'll just catch it in the rough here we can go on I'll try to get to uh, another hole and we can get to a more manageable dunking distance it's, it's never you know smart to go for the dunk really on a wood um, so there's really no value to it it used to be a little bit easier it seems like they changed kind of the physics just ever so slightly and just and it has to do with more of the way that it hits the pin. I used to be able to hit the pin a little bit higher up and it wouldn't bounce off the pin as much. And it seems like they, you know, saw that all these dunks are going in and just kind of tweaked the physics a little bit, in my opinion. Because now the pin, uh, if you don't, you know, hit it right on the center, it'll deflect off a lot harder than it used to. Whereas early on in the game, you could just kind of hit the pin somewhere and it would just kind of shoot down into the cup. I don't see that as much anymore happening. Little bad break there, catching the rough. Let's see if I can't thread it up through there. I'm going to do this with a hook shot here. So I'll play off the left of my bullseye and go about an entire width, and then I'll go another half width. So it's about the equivalent of, and with the way that I swing this, I'm going to go just a little bit more than that because I'm going to put this in landscape mode real quick for this hook. And when you do this, the hook gets so aggressive that you'll end up missing on the left you're not too careful with your aim here so there you see it shooting kind of the left side and just going right through there that landscape mode let me kind of shoot that gap there off on the left I 
But if you get too aggressive with your line there on the left when you're doing that, it'll stay, it'll hit the left rough after it hops. It'll hit fairway and then it'll roll into the left rough. You have to be more centered with the way that you approach the fairway there. And let's see if I can't uh, get this dunk here for the uh, albatross. Shouldn't be too bad. With the Nirvana, it's a little bit tougher. Let's see if you can get it. I play this uh, right about Nirvana 7, probably two per two per ring. So for this shot, I think he should go about three-quarter ring, which is kind of where it looks like he's setting up to do. And then again, make sure that you're close to the center of the bullseye. Did you get it? I can't tell. Nope, but he did hit the pin. And that's kind of what I was mentioning about how they seem to have, uh, you know, kind of upped the difficulty level for the dunk. This is a couple months ago that that happened. There was a stretch where it just seemed like dunking was just getting too easy. And then it seemed like it just got a little bit difficult all of a sudden. So here, you see I'm at max club almost from my distance here. Now when I look at this, this is to an uphill target, which means it's going to be less wind. So instead of where I'd usually play um, uphill at uh, 1.5, like for my max club, I'm going to come in a little because it's uphill. It's not going to be affected by as much wind. So you're going to see me play it more like, you know, 1.8 per ring here. And at least early, like I had a little bit of screen line there. Probably, you know, 100% probably had that. I might still get it. <laughs> Look at that shoot down right back at the hole anyway. Because I missed right. Seemed like my uh, arrow there was moving just a little slow on the way back forward for some reason. I released very early. Still almost got it. Of course, I'm sure with the way that looked, like all I had to do was hit perfect ball and that was in. So your timing is the most crucial, but uh, the way that I look at some of these shots is uh, if you're going to make it, um, you know, all you have to do is hit perfect ball to hit the, the dunk if you line everything up. Let's say, you know, you're 30, 40 percent to make that dunk or whatever it is. Um, well, how much would you, like if you weren't dunking, what would be your percentage of making it? Like, would you, would you be less or more likely to, oh, I meant to go to shootout. No, that's okay. It's just friendlies. Um, so, dunking is kind of a method that, it's kind of, it can up your chances in my opinion. It takes the green out of the equation where you could get a bad bounce, stuff like that. And, uh can be a little bit easier now if you're not going to hit if you're having a bad day where you're not hitting anything perfect then obviously you know probably dunking's not going to be the best route but aside from that well if you're not if you're if you're aiming good and not hitting perfect ball you're not going to make the shot anyway so it's kind of like it's kind of like a trade-off it's you know you're probably going to make just as many dunks, especially like in these low, low winds when we're talking, you know, small, small, two, four, four mile per hour winds. You're going to be able to make it just as easily with a dunk as with a normal approach. So let's see if I can't hit another hook here. Again, I'll just kind of do right around here. Here's a hook shot. I'm trying to shoot this towards the green. Ooh, almost. So if I would have hit that uh, little fairway patch there, I would have skipped over. Now you can still dunk from these. Uh, if you can still dunk from these uh, bunker shots as well, um, I don't really recommend it. Because I think with this hill here, there's a pretty easy shot when you uh, try to dunk, uh, when you try to play the slope of this grid, the natural slope here, you can get it to feed into the hole sometime. 
and uh, I think dunking here is kind of a, a little bit more challenging because there's real no uh, no room for error there too. So let's see if I can't get this one to fall. Now, when you're dunking here, uh, the most important thing is, you know, perfect ball. You can see how big my target is. So when you're looking at the target, you see I'm going to play ever so slightly out of the hole. Um, not very much. Right off the edge. But look at the size of the bullseye. So if I great ball it right or left, you know, that's your margin of error. You're going to miss the hole by that much. That just shows you how critical their perfect ball is going to be here. Because without perfect ball, you can see that, like, this great ball is way left. And you can see the way that it just landed there. It's way left of the hole. Uh, it's, it's the exact distance, basically, that you saw when I was setting up my bullseye there. If I hit one ring over to the left that's where it's going to land and you can see you know it's not even close to the hole so hey Zach two bull yes yeah that's what I use I use two bullseyes in and then another half for a pock uh, five six or seven um, it should be uh, relatively spot on I think on five and six you need to come in a little bit but not very much you can come in one or two rings on um, a pox five and six. It's because we had different accuracies. So uh, I would come in. I used to use about maybe 2.4 rings or like or 2.4, 2.3, 2 and 3 is what I used to do. So that's kind of what I would recommend. If you have a little bit lower accuracy, if your if your apocalypse is like a four or a three, of course that's going to change. It might come down to even two, two and one ring maybe. It's all based off of accuracy, so keep that in mind. Let's see if I can't get this one to fall here. All I needed was perfect ball last. I think one and a half rings was relatively spot on from what I saw. I just didn't hit perfect ball. Let's try it again, see if I can't get this one. Another great ball. So there you see it, missing out to the left. Hopefully he puts a little backspin on his and we don't have to just keep doing this. Can't even hit perfect ball right now. This is probably my weakest club for hitting perfect ball for whatever reason is the wood. I don't even feel like my timing's really bad on it. It just, for some reason, I think the arrow moves faster and it's just like you have to release a fraction of a hair sooner. So it just changes things a bit. I, I think he's doing a little bit of an overcorrection here, judging by uh, what I saw off my shot here. Hopefully he adds just a little bit of distance into the bullseye here. There's the perfect ball. See if he gets it. Ever so slightly short. And that's kind of what I thought is that, uh, you know, about a ring and a half, ring and three quarters for a 1.9. He had a little bit more win than me. He almost went two. It just seems like, uh, you know, you need to play that off of uh, your min club distance for sniper, which is 1.3 per ring. And it's probably pretty spot on. So a ring and a half there. It's probably spot on if you're going for the dunk. And you can get that one. I get that one a lot. So it's just poor luck. You know, I hit two great balls here on, on it both times. So I wasn't able to get it. But And like I said, you know, f for the most part, if you're going for the dunk, uh, I suggest doing it with long iron or less. Um, because that, that perfection amount that you have to be like there's so many things you have to be perfect on you have to be right in the center of the that uh, shot ring you have to you know make the correct adjustment there's just so many variables that play and the farther you get from the hole the more that can go wrong 
and uh, I can be pretty consistent with uh, making the short iron, of course the wedge, um, and I feel like uh, kind of when I get to long iron range, as long as the wind's like six or less, you know, I can still get a decent amount of those as well. <laughs> How to play with an exp <laughs> emoji spammer. So, uh, tip that I can use for that. Let me, let me just hit this real quick. So let's see if I can keep this out of the bunker up here. You see I'm getting very aggressive with my aim. But it does start shooting towards that bunker there. So if you have things on your screen like this, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm assuming that you can on my video feed. Uh, you can just go ahead and plop that right up where his emojis would be. <laughs> That's what I'd recommend. I also have like a record button that I can do kind of the same thing. Let me see if I can uh, close that out. Let me see if that looks pretty good. Yep, there I am. <laughs> Just briefly saying hi, I guess. You guys could see me in picture there. It looks like it comes like right to the, so like probably like just to the left. If you could find, yep, there it goes. So I'm covering his emojis right now. <laughs> That's like the perfect. Uh, <laughs> it's right in the. It was right over his emoji. I don't know what he even said. <laughs> so, usually when I'm messing around, I'll go for this shot here. I don't usually play this shot because, as you can see, the landing area is kind of ridiculous. But when you pull this off with just the amount of rings, this is a very, very great shot. So here I'm going to go slightly under two. Um, of course I do have a very side wind here, so I'm going to try to counter it with a little bit. But when you get this to land right, it just kind of shoots right at the hole. It looks like I either underplayed my wind or overplayed it because I didn't have that going at the hole at all. So it obviously kicked something and just bounced sideways, completely not where I was aiming at all. I should have just laid it up and went for the dunk. I would have had to go way into too much power there to go for the dunk for that shot. So I'll try to get the dunk for the shootout here. And here you see it's a long iron. You can see like the bullseye there that the farther out you get, you see the, the bullseye, the size increases. You can see with the Hornet, it still has pretty good accuracy, but um, there's not enough uh, error tolerance that uh, if you were to great ball right or left, you could see that the bullseye is bigger than the cup. So the only time that you can guarantee some precision is when the bullseye is smaller than the cup. So as you could see in with his shot, even with Hornet, that's the most accurate iron. Probably has like 96 accuracy or something on his club. Um, it's still not small enough to be smaller than the hole. So the most critical thing when you're doing the dunks is making sure that you get that perfect ball. Because if the bullseye is bigger than the cup when you're setting up, there's no way that you can hit a great ball to the right or to the left and still have it go in. Back to this hole. <laughs> this is the one I hate to dunk. It's so awful dunking this. You can get it. I've seen, you know, video proof of this going in. It's just, it's just a really tricky one.
Now, what was I saying last time? I'm trying to remember. I think I said like 1.1, 1.2, somewhere in there per ring. And it was kind of good. So maybe try like a... I'll probably try, if I have a similar wind here, or 2 or something. I'll try to play like 1.2 per ring and just see if I can't get this. Because I think he put backspin on his, which will keep it on the... Uh, keep it on the well, on the course. Of course, you just see every time we're getting great balls on the shot. It's so bad to just get to the actual dunk shot and then not be able to hit perfect ball. It's the worst time to miss perfect ball. And like I said, this is probably the hardest that I have to hit perfect ball is on my wood. I, I hit more perfect balls with my driver than I do my wood. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. You see what I'm doing? I'm like rotating the screen, making sure that I get kind of lined up straight on the pin. And uh, 1.2 will be two and a half rings. So I'll just make sure that I'm somewhat centered there. Of course, even if I hit this perfect, I'm assuming it's not going in. Finally got one perfect. And it, it landed short. So, you know, that's kind of the thing that makes this whole make no sense to me. So I landed way short, right? But it was right on the line, which means I'm playing the right amount of wind. But it lands way short. And that just kind of, you know, adds to the difficulty level of why this one's so challenging. Because it's on that hill, so it seems like the hole raises up a little bit. So you see, even though I have the aim virtually down now, it comes up short. So it's like you need to add power to whatever your aim is to actually get that one to go in. Which means to basically make that one, you're going to have to line it up incorrectly, like visually incorrect. Like put it past the hole, start lining it up past the pole in order to get that one using like a normal adjustment method which is just kind of a funny thing to have to do. Much better on my tee shot this time. And uh, that should put me right in between clubs, like very close to claw and bringer range for that uh, max distance dunk there. And that's nicely done too. Um, both of these are good uh, distances to go about either A, making the pitch or B, going for the dunk. Since we have the uh, dunking video up, we're going to just go for this. Normally, you know, I might backspin it. And you see, like I mentioned, you know, right at this min distance here for the claw is about 3.0 per. So coming up a little bit usually puts it at about 2.5 for me. But since it's even more uphill than that, you know, it's going to play more towards min distance here. So you're definitely going to see me keep it inside the cup here. You know, you see I'm putting like the th that one ring right at the edge of the cup, which is like my three. And you see I have almost, you know, half a ring of tolerance again on the cup, which is nice to have. It's nice to have that much air tolerance when you're going for these dunks because it increases, you know, the likelihood that you can put it in. If between the edge of the bullseye and, you know, half, if I have that whole entire distance covered by the hole, the likelihood that I can make it is very high. The only thing you got to focus on is uh, being able to get it. Uh, Get it in the center of the bullseye and uh, make the shot. And this is, uh, you can look at the, the Hornet here. 
So the Hornet here does have basically at least half of the, it has about 60% of that bullseye covered. It's about 60%, which is crazy. So you see when he puts the center of the bullseye, it's still in the hole and the right edge is also still in the hole. He has so much air tolerance here, the only thing he has to avoid is just short hitting it, and that's it. And a little short on where I would pull it back to. Um, I like to go just, it's just kind of ever so slightly past dead center. There's like one little tick mark past is what I like to do when I'm doing mine, my dunks, uh, to avoid coming up short like that when I go for it. Um, and part of it has to do there also being uphill. So you're shooting to an uphill target there, which is going to tend to make the ball kind of land towards the front of the cup um, on its normal plane. So, which means that you always have to worry about the front of the cup. So one of, one of the things that one of my friends does when he's doing those is he'll actually line up shots like that on the back of the cup instead of the center of the cup because it'll account for that extra distance and then it'll hit more towards the back half of the cup. So just something to think about um, is when you're going for those dunks, especially on like uphill like that, is to just make sure that you don't come up short like that. And one of the best tricks that I've been, that I've seen one of my friends do pretty regularly is he almost lines all his dunks up towards the back half of the cup just naturally. It's actually a pretty good way to do it. Um, now, the only time I don't like doing that is when I get into like long iron range like this. So here we're going to be more towards long iron range. Um, and I don't like doing that for that. But anything in there short, if you put it in the back half of the cup, it's, it's not the most awful setup um, to do it that way. So here I'm going to try to go basic ball. This is kind of what I was mentioning that I usually do, is instead of doing the, uh, I'll just go landscape mode for this drive, as opposed to, uh, you know, doing a, doing a slice here. Full curl on Apocalypse has enough to kind of, you see, you split that fairway. You don't need to do anything special with your drive. Of course, the only thing that might change, let's say you have Thor's hammer or extra mile, whatever, just put a Titan on. You can still, you can still pull off what I did with a hook shot. You see, I did it there two methods. There's no, there's no uh, right or wrong way to hit the drive there. Um, and again, if you just have a little bit shorter driver, for example, Apocalypse Four, Thor, extra mile, anything that would be shorter than what I'm using, which is the the maximum two, 240 distance number. Uh, just, you know, you could put on an extra ball, Quasar, Katana, Titan, plus all that extra side spin will help you keep it out of that bunker too. And then uh, if you need to check out my hook slice tutorial, uh, I have a lot of good content that could, you know, help you pull off a hook slice on this hole as well. So keep that in mind. So here, um, again, I'm going to just try to, I'm going to find, you know, bin distance is way down there. It looks like I'm going into Saturn here. Saturn makes this a little bit more of a challenge. I definitely like having claw. You see how much room for air you have. And mid claw is usually right around uh, 2.25 per ring, for example. So I might need to go just a, a smidgen more than uh, one full ring here. Um, you know, with that bullseye, just make sure that you're at least to the center of the hole, you know, where the pin is. Let's try here. See if I can't get this to fall. Nope. Great ball. Again. So my timing is uh, really poor for this video, unfortunately. I'm just kind of all over the place with the ball. I'm a lot better when I'm not dunking. I don't know. I just like think about the timing a little bit more 
when I'm just going for like a normal shot. It's not really something I think about. So I feel like when I go for the, the dunk, I can usually, you know, I'm usually really good with uh, short iron and uh, wedge, but I don't know, I get into that iron territory and I start just like thinking about perfect ball or something. I don't know what it is. So sometimes my uh, timing is a bit lacking on the dunk. Perfect ball here. Let's see if he gets it. Nope, not quite. I've been a little, little bit too much wind play there. Very, very little that the wind goes when uh, you're in there that close. So keep that in mind. And as you can see, you know, with the dunks here, timing can be, you know, the biggest uh, friend or enemy in your game. The, those days where you can't get the, the timing down can be the difference between you making a lot of shots and missing a lot of shots. And I haven't done this one right yet. This one's not too bad because, and it kind of has to do with what I mentioned, with how, you see how it's on a hill, but you can see that the hole's more receptive. Like, it's more open to the dunk here because it's kind of tilted up. The back of the cup is kind of tilted upwards. So it makes the hole a little bit more receptive for dunking. I've had quite a bit of success on this hole. Um, I would go right around two rings here, and I'm glad that, so he's right in where I would probably go for mine, and I'm hoping he gets perfect ball. I'm assuming he's going to be very close here, and he got it. So let's see if I can't use some of that, and you know, I, I feel like I had this already twice if I would have just had perfect ball. We had such easy wins. The only thing that I had going against me is I just couldn't hit my – well, I don't even need backspin. I'm not worried about it. Um, so at 1.2, I'm going to go right around 2.5 rings. So I just make sure that, you know, 2.5 rings is fairly lined up. And aside from that, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, straight up is still in the cup. So this plays more towards min, min club here. So min, uh, min club distance is uh, 1.3 per ring. Ooh, I just missed that. So it was very close. Um, at min club, you're at 1.3 per ring. Um, and at max club, you're at 1.0 per ring. And uh, since I was 3.0, I played it, you know, two and a half rings. It was very, very close. It looks like I missed just overcorrected by. So it's probably, it's probably 1.2 almost exactly. Because I played it kind of somewhere in between there. And uh, was just a little bit too much. Just ever so slight. It looked like it landed almost on the hole with my sh with my shot there. So I was very close, just a little overcorrected. So here I am in the bunker again. 
Go for another bunker dunk. Of course, you know, the smart shot is just lay up in the fairway if you want to go for the dunk. I, I know that I have a dunking video out there, and I know I have this hole covered where I lay it up into the fairway, and I've made it in that video. Um, so if you are to search some of my other content, um, I know that it's a lot of Tour 2 stuff where I'm dunking, messing around. Um, and this is just kind of like an alternate approach. I'm just kind of blasting it up there, do it from the bunker. I just want to kind of show you that, you know, it's, it's possible. You, you, can, you can make it from the rough. You can make it from the, the bunkers. But, of course, you know, your best-case scenario, right where he just drove that is perfect dunking territory right there. That's where you want it. So here, I'm a little unsure how close I am to the hole. I just want to kind of get a feel for this. About 30% of max distance here. It's not even going to be, uh, it's definitely not going to be a full ring. It's going to probably be more like a half ring. So this is a downhill, uh, you, you shoot to a downhill target and then it kind of goes back uphill. So sometimes this wind will overplay a little bit. Perfect ball. Uh, I played too much wind. That just goes to show you like how little you have to play for wind. That's kind of a pers perfect example there. I went about half a ring because I sized it up to probably about five per. Maybe I had it in between like half and two thirds of a ring and it was just too much. <laughs> Yeah, it is a waste of a snow globe, but uh, I do the same crap, too. Um, you know, there's really, there's there's no real threat of me running out of my globe, so I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll pull them out randomly in friendlies, kind of in similar situations, just messing around. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can get to this one with uh, definitely less less effort. Tighten, tighten or less, you can get to the green here for sure. Let's see if Rob can't uh, throw this one in the cup here. Shouldn't be too bad. Hornet is uh, probably my favorite um, accuracy dunking club. I, I love being able to have that small bolt. He's been on the front edge of everything. <laughs> so that doesn't even surprise me. He just keeps, keeps landing everything just short. It's crazy. But uh, what I love about the, doing it with the Hornet is you have so much accuracy. You see how small his uh, bullseye is? It, it lets your error tolerance be so much better that you can just pull it to, uh, you know, you have to make less of an adjustment. It just, it's just a nice thing to have. But uh, what's nice about Claw is all that extra backspin, even when you miss the dunk. So there's certain holes where you can miss the dunk and if you play the slope right it'll still come back down the slope back to the hole you saw me do that on that one par five there and uh, so that's just another kind of uh, neat little thing uh, I definitely like having that backspin definitely desirable well let's keep going for this I'm gonna kind of adjust off of what I said last time. I'm trying to think of what I mentioned. Was it 1.2 per? But I'm going to set it up more towards the past the cup this time, which kind of makes no sense logically, but uh, I'm going to kind of go at it like this because I landed short on a perfect line last time, which makes no sense. So let's just see if I can't uh, get this to fall like this. It kind of makes no sense, but... And much it was on there again the lines perfect it's just right on that hill it looks like I needed to pull it in just ever so slightly more I was like probably two cups behind the hole I should have probably put it one cup behind the hole and it was probably spot on 
And again, that's what kind of makes this hole so hard to make is the fact that you need to even do that because you that's not typical for a dunk shot that you need to go past the hole to make it. Now how much you need to go past isn't very much. Um, I'm assuming he's going, well, why is he going two rings here? I'm assuming this is right around one ring. And there he is. He's coming back to one ring. So now he's adding power. It's probably going to do the same thing mine did. Because I kept mine more centered. Yeah. Just slammed the center of the pin. Oh, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> that would have been epic. Just if you would have put top spin on that. Top right top spin. That might have been in the cup. That would have been so epic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so here I remember last time I was too short. I'm going to try to run it through the green this time. I like to get very aggressive. You can see what I'm doing with my drive here, sending it up in the trees. So when I put all this curl on it, it actually won't hit the trees when I do it like this. Now, that great ball might make it hit the trees, but uh, perfect ball wouldn't have. And there you see it. You kind of hit it. You can't when you go aggressive with your line there, you have to hit perfect or bail out to the right. But it's kind of a really good uh, line because, especially when you're using basic ball and you don't have side spin as an option, it's the only way to keep it out of the bunker, A, and uh, still going up towards the green is to get super aggressive on that line. So you need side spin. When, if you aim out to the left like this or out to the right, well, of course, this is the other alternative method, which is uh, you can hook it, and that'll give you plenty of the extra side that you need. Um, I don't like going at this with hook because it doesn't require, the, the, the shot itself doesn't require a hook to pull it off. So what you'll see me do is, you know, especially when I'm just messing around, is I'll just play it super aggressive. And uh, if I get the wind to do it. You see, I got downwind here, which makes my shot that I just did a lot easier. You just got to hit perfect ball. I'll, I'll, I'll try it again. I can kind of th This is kind of a good visual for you. You see, it looks like I'm putting it in the trees, but it's still right on the fairway. So you can see what I'm doing here. And this is kind of what I'm doing. You see how it's perfectly fine as long as I hit, you know, perfect ball. So I just wanted to kind of give you a nice visual of that. You could kind of see what I was working with here. And here you're seeing me just a little bit early on my timing. And usually when I'm early, it's going to be out to the right too much. And I'll probably thread it up towards this bunker. So you got to hit perfect ball if you want to uh, get that on the green with that method that I'm using. But uh, it only works for basic ball. And it has to be downwind. And of course, you have to have a driver with some good length. It would have to be an extra mile or extra mile eight. Four, four or above, and then it's still hard to take that aggressive of a line. So really, you need, you know, probably extra mile eight or. Aside from that, it's putting on a uh, power ball. But if I can land it more aggressively, it just makes that curl shot so much easier to get it around there. And uh, both of these good dunking ter territories here. Um, of course, anytime you get it to the hole here, you're, you're making your life a lot easier for the dunk. Uh, up at the top of the hill here, you have to be a little bit cautious. So I have a very challenging dunk ahead of myself. But if you look, I'm, I'm close to Max Club here. But you can see how small the bullseye is. So visually, you know, my, my end bringer is going to play about, it's 100 accuracy, so it's going to play about one per ring. So, but you can see you know two rings over I'm still inside cup here so 
I don't need to go very much with uh, how much I'm breaking this ball. And then, aside from that, it's just making sure that you don't short hit it because, I mean, you can see the way that the cup is kind of closed off on the front end of the cup since it's down a hill. And so you can kind of visually see what I'm talking about there on that zoom in, that the very front of the lip is pointed up, which makes the hole very closed off and unreceptive to dunks, but I'm still able to get it there. These other angles are much easier. So now you're seeing the right side of his cup is closed off and the left side is kind of the low side. And uh, you see how you can see a lot more of the cup here. But again, um, you know, you don't have to you don't have to play the wind here. He's in there under like half a cup, half a uh, half a club, and at half club distance, it's more like two, three per ring. Um, so he doesn't even need to go a ring here. So when you're doing this dunk, you have to go less than a ring. It's basically like not even breaking it off the pin really. And there you see a couple dunks go in. Let's see if one of us can't get this playoff hole too. This is the one I like. Still haven't got though. Thanks, Jamin. That was a pretty good shot from both of us here. We are to the uh, par three. This is this is my favorite one to actually get for the dunk. I still haven't even got it because I have a couple great balls. Probably would have had one of those. This this is another win, you know, that I assume if I get perfect ball, I'm going to have the dunk. It's just a real easy, low wind. And uh, with not a lot of angle to it. It's more straight. Makes it easier to make the dunk. Now, it looked like he underplayed that. Uh, he great balled it, but... Let's see if he put his backspin on. Yeah, he's got the backspin, so... Should be good enough. Let's see if I can't get this one here. Um... I've been playing at about 1.2, 1.3, and you're seeing the win that I actually get is right about that. So less than a ring. Of course, just make sure that uh, perfect ball. And that's pretty much all that this one's going to come down to. Perfect ball, center cup. So a couple dunks for you in that hole. One for the pitch and then one for the wood shot. But like I said, you know, that, that wood shot, it's going to be more of kind of a uh, risky type shot no matter how you look at it. I don't like to dunk on... Uh, you know, winds more than, say, three, four miles per hour. So if you're on a tour where you can't get it, uh, whatever you're using, Kingmaker or whatever, to even get the wind down that low, like it's kind of, it's not a very productive shot to even do. It's just kind of fun. It's uh, nice to come on these low tours just for you to be able to hone in on wind play and uh, be precise so this is more for you to practice your timing, practice your uh, lineups, and uh, just practice your releases and everything to be able to pull off these shots. And when you get to the later tours and you have, you know, seven mile per hour, nine mile per hour, you can still go for the dunk, but it's just got to be on like a short iron, for example. So, just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot easier to uh, to pull it off with, especially with the higher winds w when you do it that way. So, let's see here. Let's go at this landscape real quick. Another great ball. Should be good enough to get around the corner here. See, I'm just shooting it low down around there, and we should be able to go at this with another dunk here. Hopefully get this long iron to go in. I think I great balled this last time. So let's see if I can't get it.
So Goliath, not the best uh, club to be dunking with. I'm assuming he's overplaying this here. So on the low end for Goliath, I think you're looking at 2.0 per ring. Right around 2.0. That's the very low that it could ever be. Um, and uh, Saturn's kind of similar. I think the accuracy is just a little bit higher. Just barely. Not very much. Um, and you see, but towards min, towards the min club, like I'm assuming kind of maybe both of us were, or, um, it's more like two and a quarter, two and a half. So if I'm playing this more at two and a quarter per ring, I'm going to need to come inside a ring some, you know, 80% of a ring. So I'm just trying to visually size up, you know, 80% there. And this is pretty close. To where I think I want it. And then just make sure that you're kind of centered. Of course I get the great ball. Got a comment come on the screen just as I was about to release that. And it just kind of threw me off a little. <sighs> yep, thanks. Glad I, glad you could make it too. You're catching the tail end of this one. This is actually the uh, last hole that we're going to be able to do. Uh, my playing partner here has to go. And plus, I'm at an hour or something in this feed anyway. So I was just going to go ahead and close this one down. It's unfortunate that I couldn't get the albatross on this one. Got two good efforts at it. And, well, probably had three good efforts at it. Maybe I got it. The, I don't know if I got it the first time. I forgot. I, I remember we played this really early on, one of the first holes. I don't even remember what happened then. But uh, this hole has not been my friend today. So, a little unfortunate here. Bad timing. So as you guys are seeing, you know, throughout this feed, you know, most important things to kind of review, you know, of course, perfect ball is going to be the utmost important. There's no, you have absolutely 0% chance with uh, not getting a perfect ball. That's foremost. But uh, the second most important is going to be uh, your release point on that bullseye. Um, of course, uh, when you're lining these up, you know, knowing where to line these up come into play too. And uh, what's nice though, if you were to record, like, you know, from the short tees, you know that I'm roughly been playing at 1.2 per ring here, and it's relatively spot on. Um, it's always going to play that number. So that's one of those nice things, 1.2, 1.3. So if you remember that for every time that it comes up, or any time that you're on the short tees, you could always use that number. But uh, keep in mind, when you're doing the uh, release, make sure that you're very centered with your release point. Uh, let's see if I can't close with the make here. Another hammerhead. So it should be right around two rings here. I'm going to come in just ever so slightly on two rings. I just want to kind of visualize you know, the target line. Try to get it lined up with the wind. The same direction. Get this as centered as possible. And just ever so slightly. If anything, I need to be a little bit long. Ah, of course I get a great ball. So there you have another one. I think I might have had that without the uh, great ball, but uh, just something to keep in mind. Um, I do have uh, at least another dunking video out there. It's, it's some of my earlier content, but uh, the method should be uh, very similar. 
um, to what's in the video that I am doing here. Um, the only thing that was a little bit different is what I used to do is I used to make sure that my pullback was a little bit farther because you used to be able to slam the pin a little bit more. Whereas now you have to really hit the hole a lot better. So I have to be a little bit more cautious when over pulling back. But if you want to check out that other video that I have for you guys, um, I do have another dunking video out there that's a little bit some of my earlier content. But uh, it kind of reviews a lot more you know, dunks and it's more toward two stuff, I believe, but uh, feel free to check that out. And uh, thank you guys for uh, showing up for this uh, dunk tutorial. And I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And uh, happy clashing out there. See you guys later.